Sunday morning. morning. You need to get some friends that make you run harder. You need to get some friends that make you uh, go fast. You need to make some friends. That, because when you understand the greatness that God has called you to be, then you want folks around you that can be with you for the journey. Have I got anybody in here that you know that God has called you to be great, that God has called you to be special, that God has called you to do something wonderful? What's up, good old COH? Y'all know it's a good Sunday morning. Oh. And Community of Hope, as Rep Bill decides to sing you songs and all that kind Always. of stuff. I'm excited because it's a new season. Yeah. It's fall now. I'm a, but I don't just mean it's a new season because uh, it's fall, but I mean it's a new season because I believe that God can shift some things in your life and my life and our life. And we're just believing for good. We have a sense of expectation in a new season. That's good. That's good. And I ain't going to lie, you know, I, I love fall because, you know, that's when you, I get to wear my layers, you know, coats and the, the hoodies and, and, and the scarves and all that. I like I, I like fall. That's not. And I must admit that I like the summer. I like the uh, summer because of the heat. I like the summer because I just have a good time in the summer, drop the top, all that kind of stuff. But the reality is each season has a purpose. That's, that's and good. And God can get that's the right. glory out that's of right. each season. And so when seasons shift, uh, it's not that we get upset because the season is shifting. Hey. But we see the value in each season because fall is also harvest season. That's good. That's good. The other thing is in seasons, you got to adjust. That's right. What work for you in the summer ain't going to work for you in the fall. You can't be yeah. walking around in, in shorts, in, in, shorts in, in the fall. You no, know what no, I mean? No, like no. you got to change the game. Now, the same thing in our own lives. That there, some things from the old season, you got to let go of. You can't wear the same stuff you've been wearing in that old season. God trying to do a new thing. And as God's doing a new thing, we are glad to be a part of it. Yes, we believe indeed. Yes, that indeed. this Sunday shall be a part of the new, fresh thing, the fresh move that God is doing in your life. But the wonderful thing is that in the fall, I don't have to stay focused on what happened in the summer, but I can move into the fall, fall. with a sense of expectation right. of that's what right. I'm going to do in this fall. That's how I want you to be, and that's what we believe on this Sunday. We want to have a sense of fresh expectation. Yeah, yeah. I know 2020 has been a trip, but I believe that God can do something some things Still a good right? and God now. can move in some ways yeah. to be able to bless your life even right now. That's right. That's right. That's good. It's time man. to pray, right? I think it's time to pray. I think we'll pray. We'll get moving. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you for your hand and your power upon these your people. We thank you, God, for the power of what's going to happen today that's going to propel us, God, into this new season. So yes. bless God. We thank you, God, that we don't just go to church. We are the yeah. church. Yeah. So everywhere we are, God, thank you're you. right there with thank us. You, so move, God, wherever your people are, whatever they're listening and whenever they're watching in Jesus name Jesus we name pray. pray amen amen and that's amen. good right there yes indeed. the seasons the seasons that are here the seasons that do you remember the ba 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 it's a Y'all know y'all know the words, neither. Y'all know that's what we do, we know the words. You think you all for good, one good lyric. <laughs> <laughs> that's rock and roll. Yes, indeed. C-O-H. Good morning and welcome to another Sunday with Community of Hope, the place where everybody has a chance. Listen, we don't care who you are, what you've done, who you've done it with. We don't care if you did it last night or you woke up doing it this morning. But listen, what we do know is that you're in the right place at the right time to get and become all that God has called you to become. And we believe that God has a blessing with your name. What church? That's it. Slam on it. I wonder if y'all will put your hands together and have a little bit of church with us this morning. Is that all right? Can we take it back just a little bit? Come on, let's do it. Take me back. Yeah. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first received it. Yeah. Take me back, yeah. Take me back, dear Lord, where I first believed. Take me back. Take 
What's up, y'all? It's the good old scripture of the week, and I always love this part right here because this is the part where all of y'all get to participate and remember that you are, uh, that's right, right there, you are study strong. Yes, indeed. So look, I want to get right to it because this, this scripture is a little longer than usual, right? You know, this is like the advanced stage. We, we moving y'all from uh, from addition to subtraction, you know, now we kind of going into, in, in, into algebra, all right? So this week's scripture, it is Isaiah, the 41st chapter, the 10th verse, Isaiah 41, 10, and it says, So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's it right there. Once again, Isaiah 41 10. Don't y'all uh, forget to memorize that scripture, get it locked and loaded so that you can be study strong and then go to www.hipcoatnation.com to upload your videos. We need your videos because every time y'all send in a video, I get excited because y'all know that just makes me, oh, y'all already know what it does. I, I can't do that yet. I can't do that yet. So look, Last week's scripture, the scripture y'all were supposed to memorize for this week, it was uh, Colossians, I'm sorry, it was 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. It was that's 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 18. And it was give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Look, y'all, I know y'all, I know y'all knew it, and I want to know how I know you knew it. Because these these cats right here know it. Check check them out. Good morning, Coh. This is Brother Kurt with the scripture of the week, First Thessalonians five eighteen. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Security team, study strong. First Ephesians five eighteen. Give thanks to all considered, for this is God's will for. You and Jesus Christ. Hey, CYS family. This is Brother Greg. I'm coming to you this week with the scripture of the week. Coming from 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5.18. Study strong. God bless. Okay. Okay, I see you. Security's in the house. Can we get a now what one? Security out there holding it down. Y'all doing your thing. Hey, security. Hey, listen, because I know most of the brothers on security. So I got I got I gotta change the dance up. Cause I, I spoke to God and God said just give them two. Just give them two. Cause it's security. So I'm doing this for security. Come on, security. It's a two step. It's a two step. It's a two, two. Ha! Hey, COH fam, look, one of the great excitements of this season has been how you all have been such a blessing to so many during the season. Uh, once again, on this Sunday, September the 27th, we are giving at Iverson Mall from 10 until 12 free groceries. Shout out to everybody. It was such a blessing. Well, last Sunday was a little different, a little special. We had what we called Soul Sunday. Henry Soul Cafe was out, and they gave out a 1,000 meals. I mean, it was just a wonderful time, and we gave out groceries. It was amazing. I uh, had DJ uh, In Your Face was there, and, and we're just grateful to God. This Sunday, right now, 10 until 12, September 27th, we've got free groceries once again. Iverson Mall, free groceries once again. Shout out to all the folks 
who worked so hard, the whole outreach team, Reverend Tia, Brother Costello, the men's ministry is out, just the brothers and the sisters who are just out holding it down. Uh, we are so grateful for you all, and we thank God. Now, if you want to help, if you want to help, uh, that you can go right to our website, hiphopenation.com, and there's an area right there on the front that you can click on to be able to help. It'll just say, if you want to help uh, with outreach, it'll say, if you want to help with outreach, and you can click right there, and, and we'll get your information and get you plugged in. Because one of the blessed things to be able to do during this season is to be a blessing to somebody. I'm talking about there were so many people last Sunday that the parking lot was full and the line stretched all the way down to the Nail the Road subway station. That's the kind of need there is in community. Folks were lining up for a 10 o'clock giveaway. They started lining up at 8 something because that's the need in community. But we want to thank God that you all are helping us, whether it's through your giving or through your physical helping us to be able to be a blessing to so many. And for that community of hope, we're grateful. And we just thank God for the kind of church family that you are. Now, look, I need y'all praying. I need y'all to keep praying hard because God is doing some stuff, too. God is doing some stuff. God is working on some stuff. We're working on some location stuff. And so I need you all praying because I believe that sometime soon we'll be able to come with some really dynamic uh, uh, kind of announcements to you all. But we need you all praying as God is moving and God is working some stuff out. And we thank God once again for the opportunity to give because with all that God is doing and all that we are doing for so many, it is your tithes, your offerings, your special gifts that help us to do it. And so right now, uh, we thank you, God, for your tithes for 10% as you're giving of your tithes, but also for your offerings and also for your special offerings you're giving uh, to the Bread of Hope campaign. You can give in any of those ways, but we want to thank God. It's all of that giving that allows us to be such a blessing. We want to thank God. Some of you all have even gone and talked to businesses, have talked to your companies that you work for, and they've been giving to the Bread of Hope campaign so that we can be able to do the kind of work we need to in this region to help so many. So even right now, you can give in so many different ways. One, you can give on Cash App by the dollar sign Give COH. Or you can be able to give in Givelify. You can be able to give on our website, hiphopenation.com, that wherever you want to give, uh, you can be able to give. And we thank God for your giving because we believe that God's going to use your gifts to be able to meet the needs of the multitude and be able to allow this church to have the impact in this region, this nation, and this world we're called to have. So God bless you, community. I want to pray for you even as you give because we believe that, believe that it's to God's honor and to God's glory. God, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Thank you, God, for every giver. We thank you, God, for every gift. We thank you, God, for every family. And we thank you, God, for every sacrifice. Now, God, you bless it. You bless, God, every seed. And we thank you, God, that it's a new season. It's harvest season. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah Oh, 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 oh
Hey, how you doing? This is Pastor Ware once again with your mental health moment. As we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, today I'd like to talk a little bit more about triggers. Remember we talked about trigger is really just a emotional response, even sometimes psychological response to a previous trauma that you may have experienced or honestly just witnessed and it had a profound impact upon you. So today I want to actually start to deal with how we deal with triggers once they actually show up in our lives. And really, I want you to consider three things. Stop, look, and listen. Stop, look, and listen. Now, obviously, these are actually good uh, things to remember in almost any situation. But the first thing is when we start to feel, quote unquote, triggered, then the first thing we should do is stop. We should not try to make any decisions. In some cases, we shouldn't say anything. We should try to, if possible, make sure we limit our actions until we're able to do the second two parts, the look and to listen. But the thing is this, is we don't want to just react off of being triggered. And sometimes doing that, we will have a response that is not proportionate, is not equal to what was presented to us. And so sometimes we really just want to make sure that we watch our responses to what is, uh, for lack of a better word, that comes at us. So the first thing is just to stop. Take a breath sometimes. Uh, just be quiet for a second. Whatever you got to do. Sometimes a person might have to just <laughs> clench their hands. Whatever you got to do to just stop yourself in your tracks. Just for a second. That is the first thing. The second thing is look. Look at the situation. To look at it to see is this just a reminder of something that was in the past but this is not that thing. Be able to look at it objectively. Be able to look at it in a way that is as reasonable as you can be in the state that you're in. So therefore you want to take the time to actually look at it for what it is. Not what you think it might be, not what it's been in the past, but what it is right now. Be able to look at it with reasonable eyes as much as possible. And then the last thing is listen. Now this is different. I'm going to listen to what my body, what my heart, what my mind is saying to me. So even though we are not controlled by our triggers, even though we don't have to definitely be uh, for lack of a better word, we don't have to be uh, ruled by those. We do want to make sure we are listening to ourselves. So if I'm feeling that I am uh, fearful, if I'm feeling that I am angry, I want to be able to not ignore that, but to be able to listen to it. So then I can then make decisions that what to do with it. Because even the Bible says what? Be angry, but sin not. So therefore, I do want to be emotionally mature enough to be able to feel and acknowledge my feelings because there are many times when we do have to express those. So we don't want to totally suppress that. We want to be able to experience them. We want to be able to feel, uh, feel them, but to be emotionally mature enough to be able to express them in a way in which we are in control. So once again, we're going to stop Stop what you're doing and then make sure you don't respond out of the trigger. We're going to look, look at the situation, look at what is going on as objectively and reasonably as you can. And then lastly, you're going to listen to yourself so that you can be able to know what's going on with you so that you can then respond in a way that is under your control. God bless you. See you again next week. Peace. Fellas, I know this has happened to you before. Woke up one day and you were just off your game. Or maybe this whole pandemic has got you blown. Between the coronavirus or social injustices and, or this election season. Or you just trying to juggle your job and your family. Man, you got a lot on your plate. But the truth is, you're not alone. There's a lot of brothers out here like us. Just trying to get it right. Here at COH, our men's ministry created a space for men to discuss whatever's on your mind. No judgment, nothing off limits. Real brothers, real talk. We call it the battalion bubble. 
It's a virtual Zoom call that happens every Tuesday night, but don't look at it just like a Zoom call. It's a place where game plans are formed. Better believe there's a word for every situation that you're going through, and we can learn from each other on how to serve God, how to serve our family and our community. Come to the Battalion Bubble. It'll bless your life. COH fam, uh, it's not just a new season, uh, but we have to make sure that our time is winding up on filling out the census. We want to make sure that each and every one of you have filled out your census form. Census is important uh, because it is the count uh, that shows how the pie is split up, how the resources are delegated and allocated. And so we need you to make sure to fill out your census so that your family is taken care of, that your children get the resources they need in schools, that we get the resources we need in our communities. Make sure to fill out your census. If you haven't filled out your census, I want you uh, that you can fill it out even right now, uh, that if you would text uh, 2020 census, text 2020 census to 474747, 474747, just text 2020 census to 474747, and the link will come up right for you right there, because we technologically savvy, and we're going to make sure you're able to do it. Also, uh, we need you to be able to get plugged in, and we need to make sure that you vote. We need to make sure that you vote. And so we need you to be able to get plugged in with your vote, get plugged in with your census. And if you vote, you can just go to vote.org, vote.org, and it'll get you everything that you need to get plugged in to be able to make sure you're able to get taken care of. Uh, make it happen right now, and we'll be excited. This boy ain't got no good sense. No good sense. <laughs> COH, baby. Vote. Holla. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God, I I won't be overwhelmed Give me vision To see things like you do God, I look to you You're where my help comes from Give me wisdom Because you know just what to do know just what to do, oh yeah, you know just what to do, oh, yes you do, Lord, oh, God I look to you, and I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision to see things like you do. God, I look to you. You where my help comes from. Give me wisdom because you know just what to do. Yeah.
What's up, Community of Hope? Hey, listen, I, I want to share this word with you all on today. Uh, if you would go with me to Exodus, the uh, first chapter, the 22nd verse. I'm going to read that until we get to the second chapter of Exodus, the 10th verse. And it reads as such. It says, Then Pharaoh gave this order to all his people. Every Hebrew boy that is born to you must be thrown into the Nile, but let every girl live. And now Nan of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. And she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and, and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then his sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me, and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. She named him Moses, saying, I drew him out of the water. I want to preach this morning, if y'all don't mind, something that's been laid on my heart. I, I want to preach from this sermon topic right here. I'm just flowing with the river. Matter of fact, just, just tell yourself, I'm just flowing with the river. I, I, I heard a story uh, of a man whose mother would ask him, are you flowing with the river? And he said that even though he had no idea what she was talking about, that he would always answer, yes, mother, I'm flowing with the river. Every time they would talk on the phone or they would communicate through text, his mother at the end would always ask, son, are you flowing <coughs> with the river? He would always respond with the same answer, yes, mother, I'm flowing with the river. But, but it was just one particular time that he was having a bad day, he was frustrated, uh, and he had a lot on his mind, and his mother called him, and they were on the phone talking. And of course, she asked that uh, familiar question that she always asked him. She said, son, are you flowing with the river? Uh, he wasn't in the best of moods on that day, and he, he answered her differently. He did, not, he did not respond the way he normally did, but he, he actually asked her the question. He said, Mother, I, I know you're always asking me that, uh, and I'm flowing with the river. He said, but Ma, what does that actually mean when you ask me, and I'm flowing with the river? And, and, and so his mother told him that all of us have a river that God has given us and that God has put all of us in. And that, and that when we are flowing with the river, she said, it basically means that we are in God's will. Uh, even when we don't always uh, understand it and even at times when we don't really recognize what's going on and even when there, things aren't always going our way and even when the rivers uh, of life are raging amongst us, she said, that, that, that you always know that, that you're in God's will by the way that you are flowing with the river. And, and flowing with the river is that place where we feel like our lives are already predestined by God and, uh, and, and that God has already pre-designed our pathways. Uh, it, it comes with an understanding that although we have free will, that we desire to live in God's will. It's a surrendering of ourselves where we allow God to have control over er every area of our life. It's flowing with the river. Flowing with the river makes us vulnerable while we hold on to the one that is our refuge. Flowing with the river makes us transparent while we believe in the one who already knows everything about us. Flowing with the river makes us weak while we gain all of our strength from the one who is omnipotent. Flowing with the river helps us from drowning our dreams and, and fighting upstream 
against our purpose and delaying our God-given destinations. Flowing with the river is challenging but comforting. It is scary but sacred. It is uneasy but peaceful. It, it's, the, it's the rhythm that we must all contend with. It's the rhythm that God has put all of us in. And we have to uh, take an assessment of our own lives. And sometimes we have to ask ourselves, am I flowing with the rhythm or am I flowing against it? And, I, and, and, my, and my challenge for all of us is to make sure that we are flowing with the rhythm. And I believe that when we look at this familiar story of baby Moses being placed in the now river by his mother because uh, uh, she wanted to make sure that he would not be killed uh, by Pharaoh. I, I, I believe that there are a couple things that we can learn while baby Moses was flowing with the river that can help us to flow with the river. The first thing I want to share with you on today is that if, if when we are flowing with the river, always remind yourself you are being watched. That, that's right. As a matter of fact, just tell yourself, I'm being watched right now. Right now, I'm being watched. Some, some wonder, why did Moses' mother put him in the river? Uh, she was putting him in the same river that Pharaoh was drowning every Hebrew boy that was born. And, and some scholars, some scholars speculate that she felt if her son was going to die, that it would be at her hands and not at, at, at Pharaoh's hands. That she did not want to witness the painful scene of watching Pharaoh actually execute her son. Uh, but but I have to I have to disagree with that school of thought because why would Moses' mother take the time to build a, a, a papyrus basket for him that was coated with tar and pitch? No, no, she thoughtfully planned his escape by building something that she knew would be able to keep him safe and protected and withstand the winds and the waves that would allow baby Moses to flow with the river. And But what I appreciate the most about this text is that although it was only Moses in the basket, it, it was only Moses that was alone in, in a dark place, what Moses did not know is that he was being watched. How, how do I know it? Because in verse 4 it says that his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Uh, the reason why that is so important for us to understand is because it reminds us that although the, the, the rhythm that, that we may be going through may be a place of isolation and a place of darkness, it does not mean that we are not being watched over. Flowing with the rhythm is recognizing that God has strategically put people in place to watch over us until we get to where God intends for us to go. The truth is, and, and, and I want us to be honest in this moment, is that we would not have made it where we are right now if there weren't some people that God had looking out for us. But not only that, not only does God appoint people to ensure our purpose, but, but God also assigns angels to guarantee our safe arrival. There are angels who God has dispatched for no other reason but to cover us while we are flowing with the river. Their responsibility is to keep us from danger seen and unseen. How do I know? Because Exodus, the 23rd chapter, the 23rd says, see, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and bring you to the place I have prepared. Uh, that's good news right there. And that's that just tell yourself right here, I'm flowing with the river and I'm being watched over. Uh, in other words, flowing with the river frees us from concerning ourselves with what people are saying about us and what people are trying to do to us because we understand that God has already assigned angels to take care of us regardless of man's plans to destroy our dreams and our desires and even our destiny. We are able to flow with the rhythm because we already know that what man meant for evil, that God will always turn around for our 
good. Look, not, not that just tell yourself and say, God, thank you because I'm being watched over. Somebody's watching me and looking out for me and, and somebody's eyes are on me and that even though I may be in the river and even though it may be dark and lonely and I feel isolated sometimes now I feel like nobody's here. I thank God that God's eyes are still on me. Last thing I want to share this morning is not only when we're flowing with the river do we have to understand that we are being watched over, but this this thing right here, right here, is I, I, I need you to get this. The second thing uh, and, and that you have to understand is that when we are flowing with the river, what was working against us will ultimately work for us. <laughs> Man, listen, I, I, I love this story because it's almost like a story out of Jerry Springer or out of Maury Povich. And let, let, let's look at the story. The baby is placed in the same river that he were babies were being drowned. Not only that, but the place where baby Moses is discovered is enemy territory. And now, now, I know this was not necessarily what the mother was expecting when she placed her baby in the river. But although the river was her idea, it was a part of God's bigger plan. And God's plan will always override our greatest ideas when we trust him to flow with the river. And, and the Bible says that Pharaoh's daughter saw the basket among the reeds in the Nile River and immediately recognized it was one of the Hebrew babies. It, it would have been easy for her to take the baby to her father, Pharaoh, so that the baby could be killed. But it says she felt sorry for the baby. But, but without even knowing Moses' sister had been watching all the time, and she then directs the sister to find somebody to take care of the baby. And, of course, the sister then takes baby Moses, I told y'all this was like Moy Povich, back to his mother. Now, the, the, the new uh, uh, Bible commentary sums it up saying it says, the Jephthah's baby who had to be taken from the mother because of the royal threat is now safe again with the mother because of the royal release. But, but it doesn't stop there. This is where it gets crazy, y'all. Pharaoh's daughter actually pays Moses' mother to take care of her own son, not realizing it was her son. She's getting paid to raise her son from the daughter of the man who wants to kill her son. <laughs> That's because when you flow with the river, what's working against you will ultimately work for you. Flowing with the river takes away the anxiety and the doubt and the worry about what the enemy is up to because God reminds us in this story that he will even use our enemies to actually move us closer to his purpose. Flowing with the river is a place of peace, harmony, and content, and it's where we are able to be settled in the presence of our enemies knowing that they are actually part of of God's plan, they, they don't have the power uh, over us because God has the power over them. Matter of fact, when you're flowing with the river and, and moving in God's purpose, you have an assurance that those who have been set, sent to make you fail are actually in place to set you up for success. Well, what our enemies don't always understand is that when they attempt to keep us from what God's will is for our life, they end up just becoming a part of God's plan and God's will to use them to help us achieve what God has already promised us because what God has for us is for us. And there ain't no demon in hell that can stop God's plan. In other words, when you see folks who are trying to keep you from your blessing, don't, don't get upset. Now nah, you ought to you ought to invite them out to dinner. You ought to buy them a gift card and tell them thank you because they don't even realize that they are about to play a significant role in assisting you with reaching blessings that were once unreachable. How do I know it? Because the Bible says that God will make our enemy our footstool. So in order to understand that part right there, can I share this real quick story? When I was a kid. 
I used to stay in the kitchen with my mother, brother, and doctor. I loved to cook in the kitchen with her, and, and there were times that she would want me to get certain ingredients for the recipe. And, 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 and our challenge was is that because I was small, I couldn't always reach where it was. And so my mama, she went and bought this footstool. This, it was a little two-step ladder, and, 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 and it allowed me to walk up to then be able to reach the, the ingredient so that I could then complete the recipe <laughs> without the footstool. I couldn't reach what I needed in order to finish or complete the recipe that I needed to do. And, and there are folks right now that who, who don't like you. There are folks right now who, who, who want the worst for you. There are folks right now who, who are praying for your denials. There are folks right now that, that are talking behind your back. Don't you get upset with them. But just know that at some point their neck will be your footstool and will be what's needed to help you reach what was once unreachable. But without them, there are some things you can't reach. God will use the thing that's working against you to work for you. And I want you to think even right now, what's working against me? Folks that you know been doing you wrong, folks you know, then setting up plans, meetings before the meetings, all that stuff. I, I want you to think about them. And I want you, instead of getting angry, and instead of getting upset, and instead of getting all frustrated, I want you to thank God. Say, God, I thank you. Because those who are working against me <laughs> are actually working for me. <laughs> they think that their plan to destroy me is going to work when in actuality what they're trying to do is being flipped on them to help me get to where you want me to go. And all we got to learn how to do is flow with the river. Just learn how to flow in God's will. Just learn how to surrender ourselves and flow in God's presence and stop being concerned about all the other noise around you and just learn that God's plan, God's purpose, God's will for my life is connected to how I flow with the river. And that's what I wanted to share with somebody. I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but I know that there's somebody that that word was the word that you needed to hear. You've been fighting against the river. Don't fight against it. Uh-uh. Flow with it. That even when you see things come up against you, obstacles and challenges, and you've been trying to fight against it, and sometimes God say, no, just, just relax. The people who think that they're doing you wrong are actually the ones I sent to do you right. You just got to learn how to flow with the river. I'm praying for you right now. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you even right now, God, that in this moment, in this place, God, as we are looking on computer screens, cell phones, God, I thank you, God, that your presence is able to penetrate through every laptop screen, every LCD, every phone screen, God, and you are right there where we are. God, somebody needs to be reminded how to just flow with the river, stop trying to control everything and just trust and believe that you've got everything under control. God, in Jesus' name, I'm praying that right now, God, that there's some enemies that have been attacking and, and it's been feeling like it's been coming from one place and then when you turn around, it's coming from another place. But God, in Jesus' name, I'm praying that you would help us get to a place where we understand that even our enemies are on assignment to help us get where we need to go. God, help us to be settled that even when we feel like we're in dark places and, and even when we feel like we're all alone, God, help remind us that your eyes are always watching over us. God, you want what's best for us. 
plans that are not to harm us, but plans that are filled with hope and a future. So God, we thank you right now. We thank you right now. God, bless your people right where they are. And God, allow this to be the week, God, that we learn how to better flow with the rhythm. It's in Jesus' name. We want to say thank you, God, in Jesus' name. We pray and we give you glory. Amen. Amen and amen. Listen, there may be somebody right now, you, you can tell that you, you know that God is talking to you. you you've never given your life to Christ and you, you want to... You want to be saved. And all salvation really is, it's the gift that God has given us. It, it, it is the, it is, it, salvation really is like the, the basket that Moses was in. It's the, it, it is what God has designed to keep us and protect us and allow us to be safe as we go through this journey of life. It is what allows us to know that our sins are forgiven. It, it, it's what a, reminds us that Jesus, his son, died on the cross for our sins so, so, that, so that we could be the ones who could be saved. It was Jesus who was raised from the dead so that we could understand that there's nothing that can keep us down because God can raise us out of whatever situations we're going through. And all you got to do is pray the prayer of salvation. And if that's you and you know you've never prayed that prayer and you're going to give your life to Christ, just right there, right there in the chat to say, you're talking to me and just say, I want to be saved. Or somebody that you know, you're already saved, but you need a church home and, and you want some place that you can feel like. And even in this time of, of quarantine and in this time of not being to go into a church, but, but you want to feel connected and, and, and the church isn't, isn't where we go. It's who we are. This is who we are. So right there in your living room, in your car, on your job, wherever you are in your dead room, this, this, this is church. And if you want to become a part of this church, Community of Hope and the Church, we would love for you to, to become a part of this church. We become a better church if you join. And not, not only that, not only do you want to make sure that everybody has a, a church home, and if that's you, I want you to say, I, I want to join Community of Hope. Just put it right there in the, in, in the chat. But the last thing is this. Maybe you just got off track. You don't feel like you're flowing with the river. Matter of fact, you're kind of at a crossroads or you've been feeling like you've been f trying to swim upstream and you've been going against the rhythm and not flowing with the rhythm. And, and you know you need to rededicate your faith. You know you need to get back on track. You know you kind of just been off, hadn't been feeling yourself lately. And, and, and you just want, want to get back where you know you need to be. You want to be reminded that God's watching you and, that, and, and you want to be reminded that you know that things are all working together for your good. And, 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 and if that's you, I, I, right where you just put in there, I want to rededicate my faith. Because all of us have challenges, y'all, and, and, and we all sometimes need to just reconnect, get back connected the way we used to be. And, and so if that's you, I want you to put in there, I, I want to rededicate my faith. And so I thank God for you if you gave your life to Christ. I thank God for you if you joined this church. I thank God for you if you rededicated your faith. Now, thank God in Jesus' name, I thank you. I thank you for the decisions that are being made right now. Lives are being different and changed because of decisions that and choices that people are making right in this moment. God, in Jesus' name, I thank you for those who are now saved and who are part of of uh, uh, the body of believers and whose lives will never be the same. I thank you for those who join Community of Hope Church and, and, and are not just asking uh, what uh, we can do for them, but God, I thank you for the gifts and the talents you've given them and we're asking uh, what can they do for us because we know that we've become a better church because they joined this church on the day. I thank you for those who rededicated their faith. They've been a little off, haven't been as locked in as they need to be, been feeling a little uh, uh, ways and not always where they need to be focused but God, I thank you, God, in this moment that you're refocusing them. God, I thank you, God, today is their day to change things around. And God, in all of this, God, we give your name, the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, listen, community of hope, I thank God for each and every one of you. I appreciate and love each one of you. And I just pray that on this week that you remind yourself and you tell others, just flow with the rhythm. When you find yourself being anxious and and worried and doubting and just just sit there and just whisper to yourself, I'm going to flow 
with the river because I'm flowing with God. Can you hope I love you? Your pastor loves you. Reverend Doctor loves you. We all love you. We miss you. And we thank God and believe that we'll see you again on next Sunday. Listen, don't forget if you haven't had a chance to give yet, you can still do that even right now. We don't want you to miss that opportunity because that is definitely an opportunity for your faith to continue to grow. And so you can give in all of the different areas. And, and But also, most importantly, listen, this week, y'all, make sure you reach out to somebody. Just check on somebody. You just never know what people are going through. Check on somebody. Check on a neighbor. Check on a family member. Check on a co-worker. Matter of fact, check on your enemy. <laughs> I told you, buy them a gift card. Tell them thank you and mean it. Amen. God bless you, COH. Throw your C's up.
two for the night, baby. I think we might some backup singers for you in the combo battle through the day. Oh, Lord. You're going to be the only combo player got backup singers. Yes, sir. Super Dave. Oh, Super Dave. Oh, Super Dave. Give God a hand clap of-